Well, there have been many fictional detectives, Hercule Poirot, Maigret, even Clouseau, but none seem to have captured people's imagination like Sir Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes and partner, Dr. Watson. The latest theatrical partnership in these roles is Jeremy Brett and Edward Hardwick, who have starred successfully on both television and now at the Windham's Theatre in Windham's. London. Windham's Theatre in London. Let's see them now in action. How do you find the word grotesque? Grotesque? Oh, strange? Remarkable? No, 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 no. Surely there's more to it than that. Some underlying suggestion of the tragic, the terrible. If you cast your mind back to those narratives with which you've inflicted a long suffering public, you will see how often the word grotesque has deepened into the criminal. Ah. I suppose that affair of the red headed men was grotesque enough at the outset. Huh? Ah! <coughs> oh, that most grotesque affair. The five orange pips. Yes, which led straight to a murderous conspiracy. Another word puts me on the alert. Oh, how did you there? Hmm. I've just had the most incredible and grotesque experience. Holmes and Watson, Jeremy Brett and Edward Hardwick. Hello. have enjoyed enormous success. All the uh, stories have enjoyed enormous success. What do you put that down to? I think probably the miracle that Granada achieved was by doing the original stories. Mm. Um, I think it was dreamt up mm. by Michael Cox way back in 1973, our producer, really to put literature straight in regard to Dr. Watson. Because not the duffer anymore, but the, f the good friend, the gentleman the medic and the soldier, mm. not the duffer. And I think by doing the stories and finding that they actually stood up to the test of film. But it really is an extraordinary relationship between these two men, isn't it? They are very close. Yes, they're club men. I mean, I think one is a very private creature, isolated. They're both very lonely people at the beginning of the books. And they meet because they can't afford the rent. Mm. Do you think it's, it's also this sort of Superman image that uh, Sherlock Holmes has? I mean, he I think, solves I think, everything. I think he intrigues Watson with the speed of light of his deduction and logic. Mm. And I think that it becomes apparent, I think, especially during the, this play that we're doing now at Wyndham's Theatre. Wyndham's Theatre. Yes. <laughs> you were at school at a place called Wyndham, Wyndham yes. Uh, Windows Theatre, it's because I think we're exposing the friendship, we're releasing the friendship through a little bit more. Also, we're very lucky, Edward and I, because we played the parts for two and a half years mm. together. And um, I'm not bored of it at all yet, because I haven't learned how to play him. So, so say, I mean, five years you've done it on television, and three yeah. years, Edward, for yes. is there anything different for you, Edward, about doing it now in the theatre? Well, it's... I mean, the main difference is just a completely different medium. Mm. Uh, and you are concentrating for two hours on a play whereas with a filming it's a day-long job and it goes on and on and on it's just a very different feeling I think it's 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 an enormously enjoyable experience just doing something different did you realize the success until you went into the theatre no no I, I must be truthful I didn't I have been working since some sort of isolation in mm. studio work filming for five years, and when we went to the public marketplace, which is what the theatre is, suddenly to find that there were children out front, I wasn't sure what the audience was. I mean, I know we sold to 75 countries and were translated into every kind of language under the sun. And I'm thrilled. I mean, I still can't believe that. But I am beginning to be aware of the fact that because of the children that it mm. appeals to a much wider mm. range of people than I thought. Five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds are sitting there glued to the play. And they come around afterwards, and I... I've always thought Holmes was a sort of um, damaged penguin or a kind of black beak. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought he was heroic at all. Yeah. I wouldn't trust the road to meet him. But th there's also this amazing thing, don't you think, that Agatha Christie wrote about Hercule Poirot, um, but nobody ever thought that Hercule Poirot was real. But they do believe in Holmes and Watson, don't they? I mean, do you get letters to you as, as real people? Well, not exactly as real people, but I certainly think they the characters are very real to a lot of people. And I think it's partially because Conan Doyle, rather like, uh, it's a different kettle of fish in a way, but uh, Ian Fleming did with James Bond, his detail 
and the precise detail of actual places and things which are mentioned in the stories somehow make give it a terrific sense of reality, a terrific sense of Victorian and Edwardian London. I remember when, Anne, when Sir um, Alistair Cook said to me many years ago, about 1981, before we started, he said that th the three most memorable people in the last hundred years are Churchill, Hitler and Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> now this was meant to encourage <laughs> me. You know, I was terrified. Well, that's really done it now. I mean, I didn't want to play the part in the first place. I thought I would fail because there have been so many people playing it before. But to think that one of those three people never existed at all is extraordinary. Mm. We, I mean, the fan mm. mail we get is to Edward and Jeremy, but we get, they get at Baker Street, 2 to 1B Baker Street, the National Abbey Bank, <laughs> letters to Sherlock Holmes asking yes, them to yes. solve cases. And they write back and say, Mr. Holmes is retired and living in Kent Beekeeping. <laughs> Are you enjoying being caught up in this? I mean, as I said, five years on television and now starring in I have to confess, I'm End. basking in it now. I, must, I didn't enjoy it. I was very poorly for a while. And I found him an enormous strain to play. He is a very dark private man. Mm. <clears throat> and you have to really drain yourself out, because I'm much too ebullient for the part. It would be very bloodless. And I found that a great strain. But now we're in the theatre with this wonderful pink success, as I call it. Um, amazing response, and we're taking it around the world. We're mm. playing till next September in, at Wyndham's, and then we're taking it very slowly around the world. I think we're bringing it to Birmingham, I'm hoping. And, um, and then I think Manchester, and then the States. So it's a lovely, yes, good time. Right? But anybody going to see it is not to expect a real whodunit. It's, it's all the deduction, it's all the clues, but the case happens as the play ends. Mm. What you get is their relationship, and you learn during the course of the play much more about them. There's a lot of deduction, a lot of sleuthing, and then in the second half, Jeremy Paul, our brilliant writer, has given us a coup de théâtre, mm. which is the secret, and it's a part of Holmes's life which has not been revealed. And it's a very exciting, dramatic moment, and I'm very happy that Ted's on stage with me to get me off over Edward, night. your Dr. Yes. Watson is this, in this is far more of a rounded whole creature. Jeremy mentioned before that he's very often played as a bit of a buffoon, a bit of a bumbler. Yes, I think that dates from the, the early films, which I, I love, and I think they had a validity then, because it was the war, and I think there was an attempt to use the stories in some ways, propaganda, to encourage the Americans to join us in the Second World War. In a, in a minor way, but um, we, times have changed, and I think one has to start from the premise that he's a doctor, and that's a difficult mm. job for anybody. Um, also, I think being a doctor, to some extent, is being a detective, and I think that's part of the appeal that he has for for, the, for Holmes. Um, but it's it's doing the play is very different because uh, Jeremy Paul was taken. A slightly different direction with it, and that makes it very, very interesting. Do you see yourself becoming another mousetrap, an establishment in no, the West End of London? No, I tell you what, you know, this business we're in, this profession we're in, it's hard enough to survive, let alone have a success. So when one has a success, although it's not a very palatable word in this country, they're much more fond of it in the States, I'm enjoying every giddy moment of it. Marvelous. I'm loving having people outside the stage door. I'm loving being with my friend Edward because we're best friends off as well as on. We're having a ball. Great. We look forward to seeing it in Birmingham. Thank Edward you. Hardwick, Jeremy Brett, thank you for joining us thank today. You.